Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to see how we can fine tune a custom YOLO V10 model. So this is the new version in the YOLO family. We have the new version 10. We're going to set up the whole pipeline, take a data set, throw it into Google Colab Notebook, start the training, and then we're going to see the results after that. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If we go inside the docs, we can go inside our models tab, you see all the different YOLO versions available. Let's now go down and hit YOLO V10. So this is the newest YOLO member in the family. First of all here, you can get an overview over the whole architecture, the key features and so on. What are the differences compared to some of the other models? We can also see that we have all these different model variances. You can see the performance or so latency, the average position on the validation set, input size and so on. So you can go inside the documentation, read all about it here. If you just take a look at this comparison table, we can take a look at the milliseconds. So the new YOLO 10 model is significantly faster compared to the other YOLO models because they're basically just making some modifications, adjustments, but the most important of all is that they remove the non-maximum suppression in the post-processing step. We see the number of parameters on the right side as well, but we get pretty high error precision on the Coco dataset and very fast inference speed, two and a half to milliseconds for a single image. If we scroll a bit further down, we can then see how we can use it. It is the exact same way as all the other YOLO models, YOLO V8, YOLO V9, YOLO V10 and so on. You just need to take your data set, format it, have the correct structure, specify the YAML file for our data set path, and then we're pretty much good to go. We can then start training it. We also have videos on the channel on how you can generate your own custom data set, take a bunch of images, throw it into an annotation tool, annotate it, export it into the YOLO format, and then train the models. If you're doing that or just using some of the data sets from the Ultralytics side here, we can then go in and train a custom YOLO 10 model in just a few lines of code. So we see inference, validation, training, and exporting is already supported. Let's now go inside our data set view. Let's just go down and take a object detection data set. So right now we have detection. So let's take this SQU 110K data set. It's basically just if you want to detect different types of objects, classes, different types of products on retail shelves from all around the world. We can see the key features here. So we can see that the data set includes over 110 thousand unique SQU categories. All of it is annotated with bounding boxes for the objects, but also the category labels. We can see data set structure. I think we have around 8,000 images in our training set. We can see that down here in our data YAML file. So this is the only file that we need to specify. You can pull it directly from the Ultralytics data set registry. So we can just copy paste this, specify it once we're going to use it. We can also see the use example. So this is all we have to specify. Right now we have everything. We have the YOLO V10 model. We also have the data set. Let's go inside a Google Colab notebook. If you want to use the GPU available in here, you can go inside the runtime, change the runtime and specify a T4 GPU. There we go. We can then connect to the runtime and make sure with the NVIDIA SMI command that we are connected to it. There we go. It should just connect in a second. Now we can run this command and we'll get the information about our GPU. Now we need to pip install Ultralytics in here. So if you're running this locally or in some other environment, make sure that you have upgraded the Ultralytics package. So YOL V10 is supported. Let's now go inside our data set again. We go inside our model tab, YOL V10. Scroll down to the user example. Let's run it in our Python code. Or we can just run a command line. Doesn't really matter. We can use both of them here for training. Copy this one. Throw it inside our Google Colab notebook while it's installing. So we just need a few lines of code and we have everything up and running. So let's go inside our dataset tab. We can copy paste the path here for our data YAML file. And all it contains is basically just the different classes. So we have an object. We can specify the path to our dataset root directory, train, validation, and test split that we need as well. And also how we can download the dataset with the URL or this Python script. So it's going to take care of all of it automatically. You just need to run these commands. You can also see how to run it here. So YOLO detect, but we can also just hit train directly. So you can grab this one here, specify the YOLO V10 model, but we are already doing it in here in Python, where I'm basically just specifying the data YAML file like this. Probably just grab this one here. There we go. And we have our YOLO V10 model. So this is a model from scratch. Let's go in and use a pre-trained one. So YOLO V10.pt. So this is pre-trained on the Cocoa data set. 
just go with 10 epochs for now because this is a pretty large data set and then we can go in and evaluate the results after that. So we installed the Ultralytics package. We can now import YOLO from Ultralytics, create an instance of a model with a pre-trained model. We can then directly on the model, just hit train, specify the data YAML file. We have tons of videos covering like how you can create your own data set, both with RoboFlow, label him, basically just convert it to the YOLO format, drop it in here. You can have it in your Google Drive or train it on your local environment and even using the Ultralytics hub. So 10 epochs, image size, we can also specify the batch size. So let's just do that. So batch equal to eight. There we go. Let's now just run here, should run automatically on the GPU, download the data set, set up the whole model training, and then we can log it, see it epoch per epoch, how is the model act like performing, how does it converge over time. So it's now just let it run here, we can see that it is downloading the data set. So it was not able to find the images in the SKU data set, and then it's just going to download everything automatically. So this might just take a few minutes here because it is 11 gigabytes. After that, it's going to download the model automatically, start the training, and we can then see the results. So now we can see that our model is done training. It has been running for 10 epochs and took around three hours on this Google Colab notebook with the free GPU instance. So if you just go all the way up to the top here, we can see that we already get a pretty good mean error position to start off with. But if we just drag it all the way down, we can see that it is increasing over time, both the mean error position of 0.50, but also the 0.50 to 0.99. So those are the confidence intervals. We can also see the losses, they're decreasing over time. Again, I only trained this for 10 epoch, probably trained it a bit longer to make it fully converge, but it took around three hours. If we go inside our runs directory, so we can then see we have our runs, detect, train, and then we have our weights, and then we can go in, extract those weights, download it, and then we can use it in our own applications and projects. We have tons of videos covering how you can do that. But if you just go inside our run directory, we can also go in and see the training results. So here we can see the training graph. So we have the box losses, class losses, all the different losses, our position and recall. We can see that it hasn't fully converged yet. Could probably train it for 15 or 20 epochs. But if we did that, it will take around like five to six hours and we don't really need that. So here it basically just shows how we can train this custom YOLV10 model on our own data set. And you can even use your own. The losses decreasing nicely, the mean error positions, they're increasing nicely together with the precision and also recall. We have tons of videos covering all these metrics and explaining them as well. So definitely check those out. So if we go inside our run directory, we can also see our validation patches where we can see basically just taking our validation images, throwing it through the model and also basically just drawing the detections on top of our images. So here it's really hard to see all the different objects because we have these labels on top of it, but you can extract it, visualize it in any way that you want. But at least here we can see that we are pretty much able to detect all the objects, at least in this image down here. So if you just scroll a bit over, zoom in. So we can see that it pretty much just detects all the objects in here. And also here, it's basically just line by line on these retail shelves. It's a pretty good one here that we can see. So we can see that side by side, here we have an empty space where it is not detecting any objects. Then you can run object detection or classification model through each of these individual objects to get the specific class, or maybe even combine it with large language models in some way. So these are some pretty good results after just 10 epochs on this large scale data set where we have 8,000 images. And then you can use this in your own applications and projects directly and this is how you can train a custom YOLOV10 model with the Ultralytics framework. Just a few lines of code or a single command, take your data set, have the credit structure. You can even use the data sets from the Ultralytics data set registry. You're good to go. Train a Google Colab notebook, export the model and use it on your own. So definitely go in, check it out. This is how you can train a custom YOLOV10 model. Thanks a lot for watching this video here. I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming ones. Until then, happy training.